We are just minutes away from SNAP reporting quarterly numbers at the bell. Uh, this optimistic 5.5% jump, I think pretty much at session highs at $16.37. This move in the stock sure is interesting considering that just back in May, shares spiraled. Look at this chart, down 43% in a single day after the Snapchat parent warned it would miss quarterly revenue and profit targets. Let's bring in Lightshed Partners, Rich Greenfield, one of the most widely followed media tech analysts on the street. Uh, you like Snap. Tell me what you're expecting today after the bell. Well, I just think they've been brutally honest. They were honest at a time. They got crucified for it, but they were honest that the ad market was slowing and that they were facing a more difficult environment. And guess what? We're heading into what looks like a recession or maybe we are in a recession. The economy is certainly suffering with inflation. There is no doubt that Snap was being brutally honest at a point in time when nobody was basically being honest with investors. And so, you know, Snap is still growing its revenue base faster than many of the other companies. I mean, they're growing far faster than Meta in revenue, obviously off of a smaller base. Mm -hmm. But they did say that their guidance may be too aggressive, even the low end. And so the question is going to be the low end of guidance was 20 percent. Do they come in at 16, 18, or do they even get really close to 20? I think that's what the market's going to be watching for is how much below that 20 percent in Q2, and then what does Q3 look like? How bad is this in Q3? Again, longer term, Snap is has incredible user growth, has continued to build its user base, and is building monetization. So mm -hmm. I, they've had pauses in growth before in terms of the speed of their growth. We're very confident in their long-term prospects of monetizing their user base, okay. but we are facing a more difficult ad market for all of the internet ad-driven companies right now. Even the TV companies, I mean, everyone is facing a slowdown right now. This is not unique to Snapchat, but obviously as one of the first to report, right. they're going to be a bellwether. Yeah, well, they, they were the ones who, who came out and said it, and that, that was a disastrous day back in May. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, do, do you expect them to beat the four-cent estimate? Is that your estimate? I know some are looking for a loss of one cent. I, I think the earnings is far less important than what does that revenue growth trajectory look like. I think it's actually going to be closer to 20 percent than many people realize. Hmm. Okay. I don't think it has spiraled down as bad. We'll see, but I don't think it was as bad as many people think. I want to get to streaming. Comcast is expected to report around, I believe, uh, July 28th. Uh, considering what happened with Netflix earlier this week and Comcast pouring a lot of money into Peacock, which I personally absolutely love because of Yellowstone, somehow they, they're rerunning all of the four seasons of Yellowstone. That's got to be a huge bump for Peacock. But tell me what you're expecting here from Comcast when it comes to streaming as it pertains to what we just saw from Netflix. I think the challenge for, for Peacock and for Comcast is what is the long-term strategy? They're losing $2.5 billion a year. Netflix is making $6, 7000000000 billion a year. So the question is, is how does Peacock become a profitable business? Can it do it it's on its own? I don't think there's any investor list. Nobody thought Comcast would lose this much money on streaming. Mm. This is a far bigger investment that is worrying a lot of their investor base because they don't see, yes, you love Yellowstone. And it's not even their show. I'm a it's true crime girl. Show. Rich, I'm such a true crime girl. But they clearly need yeah. more content. Peacock is not a daily habit for most of your viewers. And that's what they need to do. And so the question I think a lot of investors are going to be asking are, is Comcast willing to invest? Do they need to actually turn around and buy Hulu from Disney versus sell the remaining parts of Hulu to Disney. Right. There's some yeah. big strategic decisions. And obviously, Liz, Brian and Brian Roberts, the CEO, founder and co-founder, co-CEO of Comcast and, um, you know, the founding family, the, the question before them is they've been looking to do a deal. They clearly want to do something. They want to do something with activists. So is it going to be that like roll into arts. Warner Brothers? You know, we, we thought, it, we've you know, people have looked at that and said he'll, he'll take NBC and, you know, mix that into the whole picture. It comes down to one simple question. Is he willing to give up control? Because I don't think regulatory wise that or even tax wise that's possible. So okay. Comcast would have to be willing to cede control, which I think is unlikely in the short term. Okay. Longer term, I think it'll happen. Talk to me about Netflix, because we that's already in the rear view. I get it. Uh, but as we look at that company, do you think it is undervalued? Is this a buy at 223 bucks at the moment? I think Netflix is 
really in a, in, a, in, a, in a pretty interesting place right now that people should want to own this stock. If you think about what they're doing in advertising, while I don't love advertising on my streaming, I think the reality is Netflix has the one thing that every company in streaming needs to be successful, time spent. 30% of all connected TV time spent is on Netflix. On Netflix they're yeah. bigger than YouTube. They have a tremendous amount of time spent. And when you think about advertising, the only thing that matters in advertising is time spent. If you're watching, you can serve impressions. If you're not watching, if you're not spending time on a service, you can't monetize. And so the fact that Netflix has the most important ingredient for streaming tells you that they're gonna be more successful in advertising than the market is currently giving them credit for. And I think that's the opportunity to buy the stock at 220 right now. 220 right now, and and by the way, just a week, a couple of days ago, was at 167, we're thinking, oh, should you, 170? Miss that chance, everybody, you wanna buy at the lows, right? Okay, now, Rich, next week, we have Apple coming out, Amazon. We are still waiting to hear about that NFL Sunday ticket. Do you have a game on, on a bet on which one is going to beat this this game? We certainly believe it's going to be Apple. I think they are the one. You know, Amazon's already made their huge investment in the NFL with with Thursday Night Football, which starts this September and is a very big deal for the sports media world. But I think Apple wants their big bite of the NFL and premium content, and nothing oozes premium as much as Apple in their brand. Yeah. And Sunday Ticket is the most premium product within the NFL. I think it goes to Apple, and you'll hear about it over the next few months. Oof. People are going to be annoyed even more than they already are, because I'm sitting there saying, where can I find the hockey game? Is it Turner? Is it <laughs> and now with the NFL games? We shall be watching. Rich, we'll see if your predictions come alight. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Talk soon. All right. And, and look out for Rich's note after Snap uh, comes out after the bell.